Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me on the summit today is the Concordia wide receiver, Corel Cole Moose, who has just rewritten the record books up in Seward with his performance, not only this year, but in years past. Corel, I know it's been uh, it's been a, a, an interesting season, probably at best, maybe a little bit less than, than what you wanted. The Bulldogs finished four and six on the year, but talk about your year and, and talk about the 2022 season. Yeah, so you when know, we came into the year and we graduated like I think 20, 20 seniors and uh, so we had a lot of holes we had to fill and a lot of guys stepped up really well. I mean, I was the only receiver that came back with a lot of playing time and we had guys like Austin Jablonski step up, Luke Lang stepped up, Carson Arline stepped up. It was a big step up year and, you know, we didn't go our way, um, but we had moments where we were really, really good and uh, I think next year they're going to be a tough team to beat, so... I definitely think they're they're a team to look for. Obviously, Coach Daverko's teams are always going to be tough. And there were some some high moments, I'm sure, some low moments, a couple of uh, back-to-back wins that were really big for the program midseason. I want to talk about your season, though. 95 receptions, that is a school mark. 1,024 receiving yards, that is a school mark for a season, as well as 12 receiving touchdowns. It's it's It was just a great year for you. Can you tell us, from your perspective, then, what that was like? Um. No, going into the year, I mean, I had expectations. Uh, I was going to go out there my last year and give it my all and see what happens. And, you know, during the offseason, like every offseason, I grinded my butt off and just worked hard and hoped for the best. And, you know, I got, you know, like after the first game gets done, I was like, dang, like, I hope my season's not like this, like as a team and individually. But then uh, we got to about, I think it was Dak West, and I had, like, I can't remember, like 15 catches or something like that and like three touchdowns. I was like, man, this season's going to be special and I have six games left. So after that, I just like, you know, I'm just going to hope for the best, give it my all each game. And DJ McGarvey put put the ball where it was supposed to be and he's a great quarterback and he helps out a lot. You know, when you have a great quarterback, you can get you can get goals that you want to, want to get and get accomplished. But, you know, I smashed the goals I was planning. I was hoping for like, you know, like 40 catches or something. <laughs> Ninety-five. <laughs> uh, you definitely did smash those goals, and McCarvey did. He did a great job in 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 getting you the ball, and I'm sure putting it the right place at the right time. By the way, career marks 221 receptions for the career and 2,894 receiving yards for a career. Those are both Concordia marks as well. So your name, I'm sure, is going to be in the record book for a while. You were talking about coming back for this season, and it was your fifth year. So I know COVID threw a lot of things off, uh, and but in one sense, it, it did extend a lot of people's careers because they had another opportunity, maybe a little bit longer than what they had initially thought. Tell us about coming back and what that was like, uh, knowing that, hey, I've, I've got one more opportunity at this. Yeah, so back when COVID happened, we learned that, you know, that year was eligibility was free and we could get a fifth year. I was like, well, I guess I'm coming back. Like, I didn't even, even second guess it. I went to the registrar's office and like, hey, I need another minor so I can get enough credits for that next season the next day. <laughs> um, I knew I was coming back right away. Um, I was trying to talk a couple of my friends coming back. I got a few of them to come back, but no, yeah, like I knew right away I was going to take advantage of it. I mean, I've been playing football since I was, I don't know, like six years old. My dad, me and my dad have a special bond through football. And my brother plays football. He used to. He doesn't play football in college. But no, it's, football has been my life forever. And I knew if I can get one more year to enjoy it with some of the greatest guys I've ever met. I mean, I was going to take that in a heartbeat and run with it. Even if I went in debt a little bit more, you know, with college, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I couldn't say no to it. And you no, know, the season, yeah, there were some pluses, there were some minuses, but wouldn't trade it for a world. So. Well, that, that sounds great. And and I appreciate your perspective on that. It really is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We're speaking with Corel Cole Moose here on the summit on Midwest sports net, and please take the time, like this video, share the video and subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that. It really does help. Corel, you did a lot of things. Uh, obviously what we've talked about so far is what you've done receiving, but uh, you were, had an impact in, in many areas uh, of the Bulldogs games. Uh, you were the punter as well, called upon to punt and actually had a few returns uh, in special teams. You got in on the action there too. Talk about that. Yeah. So, you no, know, I was from a small town, uh, Nebraska. You no, know, we're 
the smallest 11 man school in the state. And so growing up, you had to play both ways and special teams. Back in high school, I'd, I'd score a touchdown. But then I'd have to be the wing on field goal block and then go run down on kickoff and then play defense and do it all over again. So it's always been natural for me to play as much as possible. And, no, I just love football so much. I couldn't say no to the opportunity of playing special teams. And luckily enough, I was semi-decent at it too. So that <laughs> helped. But, yeah, punting, I was actually – I wasn't a punter until like my junior year of high school. I was – they needed a guy to go play special uh, special teams on JV. It's like, hey, I'll go try it. And I wasn't even going to punt that day. Never punted in my life. And I punted one back during warm-ups, and it went like 50 yards. And like, hey, do you want to punt today? I'm like, sure. And then the rest was history. But, but yeah, it paid off. You know, I had a lot of good punters ahead of me. I had Lane Castaneda, Brady Fitzke, and all those guys. And they taught me a lot about punting. Coach, Coach Courtney Meyer, who's – been here i think since you know world war ii it feels like but <laughs> he's, he's a, he helps he helps out a lot and uh you know i i there's one coach that's changed my life a lot it's been courtney meyer and he's helped a lot with special teams and stuff too so but yeah it's, it's fun i couldn't say no to special teams well, yeah, and I, I figured you'd seen some action on both sides of the ball in high school coming in. A, a number of players do, and especially, you know, coming from a, a smaller school like you were talking about there. I have to ask you then really quickly, did if you were already playing offense, you're already playing some special teams, you're used to it from high school. Did you ever ask to play defense too, or did you say, no, I'm, I'm done? No, I asked for at least one play, <laughs> especially this year. I was like, I just get one play. I, went, I wanted my Rudy moment on defense, and I went up to our <laughs> – Went up to our uh, defensive coordinator, Corby Ost, and said, hey, can I just get one play at the end? I have one play at the end. I grew up. That's the position I wanted to play growing up. And he's like, well, last time we did that, you know, it didn't work out. And so we about blew a 20-point lead that game. So I never got the chance. But yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, hey, listen, it was worth a shot. You had to ask. I'm, I, yeah, I know that's, that, that's important. Uh, you were talking about the coaches and having the impact there. And, and I'd like you to, to even mention Coach, Coach Dabrico, too. I, you know, he's been there for a while, too, maybe not since World War II. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he's been in CERD for 15 years, his fifth year as the head coach. Talk about playing with Coach Dabrico. Yeah, yeah, Dabrico, he's a, he's a great coach. He, uh, he has great communication with uh, his players. Um, you know, this year he took over the offense, and you could see from week one to week 10 that his improvement was phenomenal. Like, he put us in the right spots a lot of times, and I think even next year he's going to take another step with the offense, and I think they're going to put up some great numbers. Um, but, yeah, no, he, he's been – been there for me through thick and thin you know we bumped heads a lot in the last five years I'm not the most perfect player to coach but you know he's very understanding and he was very helpful he I couldn't be where I'm at without him so I'll always be appreciative of him so well tell us then what what are you doing right now obviously the season's over and and life uh, is uh, you know changing and, and evolving for you i'm sure some things you already have going on because uh, you're, you're playing as a 50-year player but uh, what what's what's going on in your life right now and and what does the future look like so yeah right now i'm just uh i've been working a full-time job the last well two years at a, a prison in lincoln so i've been doing that the last two years i'm doing that right now i'm saving up uh debating if i want to do that route or if i want to go coaching um or playing professional somewhere um i just got accepted to the podium all-star bowl down in miami in january so i'm gonna go do that and see what happens and hopefully i can get into another all-star game or two and see what happens but no i'm kind of keeping my, the door open on everything um it's nice to have options so we'll uh see where the road takes me and whatever happens you know i'll be okay with what, whatever option happens so I, and I had just seen that that All Star Game uh, opportunity on social media last night, so I was going to ask you that too. I'm glad you mentioned that because it is one more opportunity. So you're not hanging up the uniform just okay. yet, hanging up the Concordia uniform, but uh, still with another opportunity and maybe more on the field. Carell, listen, it has been a privilege to get to follow you this season, specifically uh, in seasons past. But man, what a great year this year it's been for you. So uh, thank you for taking time with us, and success to you not only in the All Star Game but in the future for you. And, and uh, we look forward to seeing how the rest of your life turns out. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was a great time talking to you. So um, go dogs. <laughs>